In this video, I'm going to code a trading strategy here and I did the same thing yesterday and I'm just a regular dude. So don't worry about it if you're not a coder. Like I wasn't a coder before. I just had somebody tell me I could double my trading profits if I learned how to code. And it made so much sense because the times I usually lose are because of emotions. Like for example, if I was supposed to sell at this green line, I'm probably in a winning position right here, right? And then I think it's gonna go higher up here, but then it breaks down and I lose. I don't know if that's happened to you, but hey, you know, we're humans. It's nothing, nothing, nothing against us. Like we have emotions, we have things to do, we have to sleep, we have to do all these things, right? So we can't always get the exits or the entries that we want. Um, I actually traded the, I coded this trading bot live yesterday and it made five trades and you can see the ROI is 293%. So, you know, while these are really high results and it's only five trades and this will change, that's a pretty good indicator that this we might be onto something with this trading strategy. So I'm actually gonna build off of that one in this video and show you step by step that you don't need to have a Harvard degree or you don't need to be a mathematician or you don't need a data sci or a science a computer science or a data science background like you know i'm just a entrepreneur that did not learn how to code until way later in life you can see in the here in the background that is my my algo going off it's trying to reset these bids so it can capture some some alpha in the market which is awesome because i can't sit here and make new trades every single day right like or every single minute but a computer can so you know I already know you're a very like a uh, very persistent person that's gonna get what they want. You're here on YouTube trying to find information, right? And a lot of people just don't care and they're like, oh, well, you know, I'm bad at trading. Um, I'm just gonna lose money or I'm gonna keep trying to do it this way. You know, it didn't work in the past, so I'm gonna keep trying. But hey, if you're here trying to learn, that's awesome. You're already on your way. Just keep swimming. You're gonna make it as long as you keep you know, reaching for more information and I'll keep making algorithms live on video so you can watch the whole thing to just see that like I'm a regular person. I'm not a genius um, by any means. I'm not that good at math, uh, but I figured out how to code because I was a trader. Like I was trading all types of stuff and, you know, I was able to increase my profits. So I just want to, you know, encourage you to just keep swimming you're literally unstoppable if you just keep coding so i'm gonna build this new strategy out and let's go over yesterday's strategy as you saw yesterday's strategy did very well it had five trades 293 percent return awesome awesome um, the strategy that we used was based off of the smas here and we did the daily sma the 20 sma it told us if it was bearish or bullish if the price is above it means it's bullish. If it's below, it means it's bearish. And then we set our orders around this SMA here, um, around the SMA, pretty much. You know, I think it was like 0.1% below and 0.3% above. I'll get into that in the code here, but essentially I wanna dive right in because this is literally what I do every day. And now I just bring you along with me. So I don't wanna have too much fluff here uh, because this is my time and this is also your time and I need to code more algorithms because the way I look at it is if I just keep coding algorithms every day and I show you exactly how to do it, not only am I gonna get to the place I wanna get to with my algos, you know, it's already doing, doing really well, as you can see, 293% in one day, but you're also gonna get there as well. So if we can do this together, it's the exact opposite. I'm going against the grain of what all other hedge funds or quants do. They want to keep everything close to their chest and not teach anybody anything. But I want to demystify it because my whole life, like I've been learning on the Internet and uh, there's just not many good resources out there for learning how to, number one, code, but mostly how to build trading algorithms. So I encourage you, if you're not already a coder, please become one because it's not that hard. It's just like any other thing. You know, if you're, if you like video games, you're bad at video games when you first get the game, right? And then you keep playing the game and then you get better. You know, I, I grew up being obsessed with like SOCOM back on PlayStation 2 and then Call of Duty and then Madden. And even to this day, 
well, until I started coding. I would play video games all the time. I loved them. But now I know how to code and I got over the first initial hump of like, oh, this is so intimidating and so hard because everybody says that this is impossible to do unless you go to college and get a degree. That's all BS. And that's why I'm making this video is to show you live on video that I'm going to code an algorithm. And I did it yesterday and you saw the results. I, I should have posted that video by now going over these results and how, how it worked and how it didn't work. And it's, you know, you don't have to be a genius. Uh, I'm average level at most when it comes, you know, I failed a, a lot of classes. I didn't go to like class. I didn't care about school but it's all doable. So I just want to encourage you, I'm sorry to harp on this for so long, that you don't need a degree to code and you don't need a degree to be a quant or an algorithm trader, algorithmic trader. It's, you're good to go. So let's just, let's just do this. Um, so yesterday I analyzed these results already this morning. I showed the video, but I had a couple ideas here. Uh, we may want to widen the target percentage. So right now the code is showing that hey, we want a 20% or 25% profit target. That's one idea I have is, hey, let's go ahead and use order book data and see how many orders there are before we exit. So I wanna build something today that's based off of order book data. So let's say based off of order book data, determine the close. And ideally, the way I, I'm thinking about this is essentially, right now we have a target of 25%. So that worked out really well. As you can see, 29%, 30%, yada, yada. We did well. But some of these could have taken more percentage. For example, I was using, I believe, let's see what the leverage is here. Yeah, 25x leverage, which obviously you don't do at home. This is, this is my, my capital. Um, I'm risking it all. So you can see that it's a 25% leverage. You know, it dropped more than 2%, so it could have taken a 50% profit here. It could have taken up to like a 75% profit. Now, I'm not going to be greedy or anything. Uh, that being said, I do want to figure out how to use order book data in this algorithm some which way because I think it would be super interesting. And when I'm talking order book data, I'm talking this information here. Uh, over here on the left, if we pull this down a bit. We can see all this data like, okay, how many buys are there? How many sells are there? And I'm thinking like, hey, if the buy side, if I'm in a trade and I'm about to exit, but the and I'm like in a, in a short and it's going, the price is going down, but this number of sales is way bigger than this number of buys. It's going to keep going down. So maybe I shouldn't exit yet. Or I want to do something like we'll, we'll get into the code and we'll figure it out. Um, but again, I want to demystify this. Like this is literally what I do every day. And like I said, like I'm, I'm doing this because it's a new day and I need to create a new algorithm every single day, no matter what. So I might as well show you how to do it too, because at the end of the day, you know, I'm, I'm creating these algorithms no matter what. And it's so much better if I can teach a few people around the world to create algorithms as well. And then you can create your own. I can create my own. We can chat about them and grow together. So that's the whole premise behind this channel. And that's why I'm so transparent when most algo traders are never going to show you anything. <laughs> like yeah, try to find some good algorithms on the internet and it's it's all pretty close to chess and nobody wants to talk about it so let's dive into this and i'm gonna kill this old bot as you can see it just made the last order um should i let it run no i'm just gonna kill it so it is dead now and i'm gonna cancel these orders great job body bot um you had a great you had a great run at it we can see 293%, that's awesome. Five trades, over 24 hours. Now these obviously are, it's a small sample size. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt, like 293%, it's cool, I'm happy about it, but we need to optimize and we gotta keep going uh, because this needs to be, whatever this number is every morning, I'm happy, 
no matter what, but I know there's a next day and I know there's an improvement that can be made. So I just want to make those improvements with you and you can see that like I'm not a genius. Like in this last video, I had trouble calculating the ROI. <laughs> like that's embarrassing. And you'll see throughout this video, like I'll probably Google stuff, but let's go ahead and just dive into it. I'm going to go ahead and make a new file and I'm going to call this uh, M9. Let's call it uh, SMA orderbook.py. Okay. And I'm going to try to make a strategy based off order book, determine the close um, using strat of SMA if daily 20 SMA is under is overpriced equals bear if daily SMA is underpriced equals bull bids are orders placed pl around the SMA around 15 minute SMA so that was a strategy we built and from here I want to go ahead and essentially build onto it so this will be nice because I don't have to code as much but at the same time I want to show you everything just check out the other video yeah yeah there we go perfect just check out that other video that I posted yesterday it's like every single line of code um, I'm just gonna copy over all this information and we'll go through and just figure this out together because this is how I do it every single day so let's see here where is that m9 okay let's paste this code in here so we have a great starting point if you want this actual code of course i just give it all to you in the boot camp there's a link somewhere around that but i don't really want to plug that um and of course there's another video as well you can see me walk through all of this so let's go ahead and just format things a little bit so we know that the ask bid this is how you get the ask bid the daily sma let's see what this returns this returns df d i'm just going to format some things so this is a little easier for me to to work with today but the df d zero this passes um equals df d which is the daily SMA DF. And then this one here, this is this brings the 15 minute SMA. So we need this. And what I like to do sometimes is I just make these little notes and then I can close the functions. Equals DFF, which is the 15 minute SMA. So we already did all this yesterday, so we got all this information. Uh, this was the original strategy. I can actually put this up there. And then let's just go ahead and delete some of this information here, some of these notes. Um, this looks like our open positions, which is super important because it has a ton of information that We'll, uh, we'll need to use over and over again. This is our kill switch, which we also will need to use over and over again. Uh, if you remember from yesterday's video, I didn't use a stop loss and actually turned out to work really well. And then PL close. This is when I determine uh, if I should close the, the position or not. And right now, the PL close is based off of this. 25% target. So we went in there and we wrote a, a function pretty much that goes and looks to see, hey, how much percentage PL do we have so far? And you can see here, like, for example, they're all around 25%, 29, 24, 30%. That's because our PL close that we created yesterday pretty much said, hey, if we're, if our 
if we're at 25%, let's close it. And the reason that it's not perfect is because we don't use market orders. We only use limit orders. So you can see for the most part, they're higher than 25% because we're getting paid a trading fee. Femex is paying us to make limit orders. And that's why we spent so much time yesterday coding out this uh, P&L close because it's just, or this kill switch, because it's an elegant way of closing your position and getting paid to close your position opposed to like paying a lot to market the position, market close it. So then here's the bot. Let's see, is there anything we return here? Okay, nothing returned here. Just close this. And this is our actual bot. So what are we gonna do today? What we wanna do today is I wanna pull in order book data. So let's start there because I wanna use the order book data in some way. I'm thinking to start, we're gonna use the order book data to figure out the exit, but there might be other ways to use this order book data. So let's just dive into it and see how we can see how we can manipulate the order book data and and uh, use it in a good strategy. So let's go ahead and start here. Where should we put it? Um, let's put it right here. So def order book and print fetching order book data. And actually, I think I wanna raise this a little bit. Hmm, where should I put this? Where should I put this? PL close might need it. Kill switch won't need it, but this will need that. Okay, I'm gonna put it right above PL close because we might use it. We might use this to figure out when to close opposed to the target. I'm not sure yet how we'll use it. I think we will though. Um, but this is algo trading. Like you look at your results from yesterday. Um, I looked at the charts. I saw that there was more room to take more profit, which is awesome. And now we have to fix it. Or we not fix it, but improve on it, right? And then the second thing that I had noticed is this. Our position size, if you see here, uh, our total size is 25. And they're all shorts. These are all shorts. Starts, starts with a short. Negative 25, negative 126. So our position size in our code was only supposed to be 50. So there's something going on here. I think that we're bidding even though we're, or we're making orders when we're not supposed to sometimes. So this is cool and all. Like we got good results but <laughs> and it worked. But I don't want my total size to ever be over 50. So we'll, we'll write that up here in the notes. Never have position size over position size. Okay, so we'll fix that as well. And let's just dive into the order book. So let's try to get some order book data here. Um, if I remember correctly, it's Femix. Uh, let's call it OB equals Femix dot fetch order book and you know what I'm gonna do really quickly is I'm gonna mark all this out so it doesn't run anything let's test this out make sure it doesn't run anything perfect so because since this is my code from yesterday it would run the bot, right? So I just marked it all out, essentially saying, hey, don't don't use this. Or don't execute it. Okay, order book equals symbol. Let's print OB. And then let's run this and see if we can get order book data. Okay, so this is awesome. This is the order book data. Let's grab this order book data real quick and close it. Let's go over to our JSON file just so we can read this order book data. Format it. Okay, so it looks like it has timestamp, date time, and then the bids. These are all the bids. So this is like what the current bid is, and this is the volume at that bid. And this is a bid, and this is the volume. 
this is the bid, this is the volume. This is the bid, this is the volume. And then if you go down here, okay, good, good. We get a good amount of information. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. So we get about 29 to 30 layers deep on the order book, which is cool. Let's see what this gets. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, I think it's about the same. Rough estimate, but I think we get the full order book, which is awesome because then, you know, that's like, there's going to be so many times I point this out, but that's another reason I love algo trading because I, there's no way I can personally interpret the order book, <laughs> you know, like I can't be like, okay, well, I don't know if I should be in or out right now uh, because first I need to read the order book and see how many orders there are and then I need to put the trade on here at this point. Like that's impossible. So it's just so clear that having a piece of code do this is way better. Um, let's jump on back over to this. So we got the order book. Perfect. Now what do we want to do with the order book? Mm, how do we want to set this up? I could make a data frame with the order book if I wanted to, but do I need to? I don't think I need that for now. Mm. And I apologize, like this is really what I'm doing every single day. So I do have to think sometimes, so bear with me. You can always put the video on fast. Um, if somebody wants to make chapters to this video, you can put that in the comment section as, as well. But um, there's always gonna be pauses in, in my videos because um, this is literally what I do. So, you know, it is what it is. I hope you enjoy these and the transparency because I don't think anybody does anything like this. And I think this can really, really help to become a really good algo trader, you know? So what I'm trying to figure out right now is what should I do with this order book data? I think I wanna see kind of the velocity of, of what's going on. Like, hey, is, is it stacked way over to the, are there tons of buyers or are there tons of sellers, right? And if there's tons of sellers, then, and I'm in a short position, well, I may want to stay short, but if there's tons of buyers and I'm in a short position, well, I might want to, might want to exit that position, right? So I think I'm just going to start with trying to add up all of the data of the order book on the sell side and then also the buy side, okay? So let's do that. How would we do this? Let's say bids equals, what does bids equal? Oh, bids equals bids. Okay, I think I do need to make a data frame actually. So I'm gonna call this order book Femex No, nah, I'm not gonna make a data frame yet. I you know I like data frames. I do, I love them, I love them, I love them. I'm pretty big into data science, so pandas is really great. That being said, sometimes the data is a little hard to work with. It's just a different kind of format. So OB, I'm gonna say bids equals OB. And then let's just see if this work. works. Print bids. Okay, great. So this prints all the bids that are in the order book. And then the asks 
equals OB as print print as. These are the bids. These are the asks. You can see this is the price. This is the volume. Price, volume, price, volume, price, volume, price, volume. Volume being the number of contracts. So you can see five. You know, it changes pretty rapidly, but okay. We have those, we have the bids and the asks now. So we're good to go there. And hmm, what should we do next? Let's get uh, first bid and first ask. And then I'm gonna print these just to make sure we're working with this correctly. Slow and steady wins the race, you know? <laughs> Bids, and this would tap into the zero index. And this would tap into the ass zero. And this should print out the first bid and the first ask. Okay, so this is the first bid. Let's see. Looks about right. You know, the market's moving fast, but this is the bid, this is the volume. This is the ask, this is the volume. Perfect. Okay, what next? What's next? What's next? What's next? What's next? I want to add all of these up now, right? Let's try something like this. Let's try to let's make a for loop, trying to add all of these up. So let's do. Bid vol list because to be honest, we don't really care about the actual price. Well, somewhat we will care about it, but right now we're looking for the volume. So let's let's create a list, empty list, and then from here we're gonna do something like four uh, set or something and bids. Print set. Don't know why I called it set. Price equals set equals zero because remember it prints out the the actual price and then the volume. So zero would be volume. I mean zero would be price, and volume would be set one. And then we want to append to this list up here because we made a list that's blank and we're trying to get all of this information now. dot append and then vol okay and then we want to print the price and print the vol so this should go through print the set like what number it's in and then it should print the price well yeah, it should print the price and the volume. Let's see what happens. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, I don't think I need these prints in there, but let's just go ahead and take them out. Now, let's print this out actually. Let's print this list out. Bid wall list. See if we can get the full list. Okay, let's see how it matches up. Pretty thin. Pretty thin buyers list over here, but okay, so that works. 
That makes a list of all the bid volume. Let's try it again. Moving fast over here. A lot of sellers, as you can see by this volume. Okay. So this is the bid volume. We're good to go there. We probably want to do the same thing for the ask. But first, I want to sum up the bid volume. So how do we do that? We go uh, bid. Uh, let's do sum. Bid vol equals sum of that list. And then let's print that. See what that looks like. So one seven eight nine five. run it again see if it changes thirty eight one eight so as long as this number right here let's delete all the list what I'm looking at right now are these are the bids and it seems like it goes up to 29 16,000 it's changing rapidly obviously but if this number that prints out is Close to this one, I think we have the right data. Two five, one four. It says two one. Let's run it again. This moves so fast. Eighteen point one eight, nineteen point nine six. Perfect, perfect. Twenty four, twenty four. Perfect. Okay, so this is doing great so far. We have the sum of the bid volume, which is awesome because I can use that. I can use that. I can use that. I think that I'm just going to make a, a DF just because I've been tempted all day. And let's say bid vol equals mm, what should it equal? It should equal this. And then up here, I need to make a temporary DF. Temp DF equals PD dot data frame. Just might need this, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna make it. I made it. It's done now. And let's see what happens if I print out that data frame. Print temp DF. Run it. Okay, so that is the bid volume. This is the temporary DF. I can run it again, it will change. All right, this is working perfectly thus far. Let's go ahead and do the same thing here, but for the ask volume. So I just copy paste it, bid, and I'm gonna change this, ask, for set an ass. Did I say asks? Yeah, asks. Print set price equals set zero, volume equals set one, bid volume, not the right thing. We need this to be ask volume. Append. And then what else do we want to do here? We want to sum it up. So let's do sum ask vol equals sum of ask vol list. And then we want to do temp df 
ask no yeah ask wall equals ask some ask snap some ask some ask wall now our df should print out the volume for both and we can kind of compare it here so what I'm looking at is this top number. So this would be the ask volume. Is it 25,000, 22,000, 25,000, 34,000? You know, it's changing rapidly because people are trading. Um, and then this would be the bid volume, 11,000, 10,000, 9,000, 10,000. You probably can't see that. It's probably too small. I don't know. Try to make these in HD, but sometimes these letters are small. Let's see if we can make this bigger. Nah, it's going to make it hard to read. Okay, so essentially this DF now should print out the bid and ask wall volume and 9979 looks about right. 32, let's do it again. Should be around 24, 36, 18. So you can see it's rapidly changing, 21. Just want to double check everything to make sure it's all good. So the sum volume for set and ask, it goes through and it finds the price, which is set zero. Because remember the price is, this is what it looks like. Uh, it returns something like this. Uh, and then the volume. And this would be price, this would be volume. So set zero would be the price, and then set one would be the volume. And then we're just appending it, meaning we're adding it to this list. And we're only adding the volume to that list. And then we're summing up that list at the end after it's done. It goes through all of them, it loops through all of them. God, I love coding. I just love how lazy you can be. sums all of them, then makes a temporary DF called ask vol, and that equals that. So this is good. We're good. We got the volume in our data frame. Perfect. So I just had an idea. A lot of pressure to come up with ideas on camera, but I guess I'm not on the camera, but my voice is. Um, if cell vol is greater than by vol and profit target hit exit. Not necessarily though, you know, we'll see, we'll see how that goes. Um, because I say not necessarily because we need to figure out the data changes so quickly, you know? So my thing is, is like, I wonder how we could run this. So what I'm trying to figure out here is the data changes so quickly on the volume, as you can see. Like if I run this, it's gonna be different every time because the market is always moving, right? So the volume is this, that, ask wall, buy wall. Now it's changed, right? So what I'm trying to figure out is like, I, I don't wanna make a a parameter to be like, hey, look at the volume right now, because that, that can be different in two seconds, right? So I kind of want to do this in a way where it looks at the volume for the last like five minutes. Or at least like one minute. Yeah, let's do one minute. Um, and how would we do this? So 
get last one minute of volume. And yeah, get last one minute of volume. And if sell bigger than buy vol, do X. Okay, so how would we do this? I need to think, 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 think. One way is like do a for. X in range of what sample size do we want? Like 20? Print X. Time dot sleep uh, 10 seconds. See if this works. Zero. The heck you mean? Oh, because sorry. Still gotta have that. I wanna see the DF still. Okay, so this little function I made should okay, so it should say zero and then it should loop and say one and then two and it should do it every ten seconds. One and then ten seconds later it should do two. Okay, that logic works perfect. So now what I want to do is essentially 20, 20 samples, 10 seconds, 20 times 10. Mm. I want to do this five so every five seconds. Be a hundred seconds. We want five minutes, so five times 12, 60 seconds. Okay, so for X in range, and since we started at zero, this is actually 12, 11 is 12. Weird, but. So for X in range of 11, it's gonna go zero, one, two, three, all the way to 12, print X, time, sleep, five. So what I'm trying to get here is, I wanna do this. I wanna do this function here for the volume yeah so I want to do this 11 times and then add them all together so I think I can just go ahead and put all of this information here into here but I gotta do it carefully because I want to keep these lists created. So I'm going to take this information. And I might need to hit Google because price equals set expected index. So we go through here and get all of the volume, perfect. And then this actually needs to be over here. So essentially what I'm trying to figure out is how do I loop through this 12 times? Because 12 times five seconds equals 60 seconds. That's one minute. And then I can add all that volume up and then decide if should I exit yet or should I pause like a couple minutes and try it again later you see what I'm saying like because the problem that we ran into yesterday or good problem to have is we were profitable but there was a lot of room like five percent drops or five percent moves and you do five percent times 25x leverage which you shouldn't be using but I'm just doing this for fun for now, um, that's like 125% gain opposed to 25% gain. So I'm just trying to optimize this strategy a little bit.
right? And order book data is probably a good place to start. So I'm trying to add all of them together and I'll need to append to a data frame Okay. So for set in bids, now we want to do the same thing for the asks. Take that. Take that. Sometimes I just like writing the code out because my copy paste skills are not always on point. Okay, so it's for 11 times, it's gonna go through here. It's gonna do this and it's gonna do this and then I want it to print the DF every time. I've got these two lists, it makes them perfect, perfect. Let's see how this does. So print DF, a lot of guessing checking I do here in this, this coding world. <laughs> okay, okay. So, bid ball, bid ball, that's ball, bid ball. So it's constantly changing, great. Um, for X and range, but I didn't sleep. So time not sleep. Cause I want to do five seconds in between each of them. Okay. So that's the bid wall. And then that's the bid wall. And then that's the bid wall. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So it's doing all the functions for me. Looks like bidders might be in in control here. Looks like we're bidding. So I oh eighty one thousand. Yeah, it looks like bidders are definitely in control based off of my data. And it looks like a big green bar. So yeah, makes sense. Might be a lagging in. Oh, wow, look at that bid volume. But also, wow, we're making moves right now. That's a lot of volume. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Well, what time is it? Oh, that's why. It's 9.45. 9.45 in the morning usually is pretty hot because the markets open up. Let's check those out. So let's get back to this. This works. I don't need print X. All I need to do now is append this. So I think what I'll do is DF two equals df2 dot append temp df and i don't even have a df1 so i can just make this df so essentially i'm going to go through these loops i'm going to append them to the original data frame and Do I need to make a CSV or not? No, I probably won't. So I append every time through, I append it to the data frame and the original data frame is, um, where is the original data frame? What's it look like? I don't have an original data frame. Let's call this uh, DF equals PD
Do I even need to do that though? I might just be able to use one data frame. No, 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 I'm not gonna do that. Too risky. Let's do df equals pd dot data frame. Okay, so we go through, we create two data frames. pd dot data frame dot da, da. We grab all the information, we go through 11 times, but 11 times and a five second sleep equals about a minute of, of data. And then we append it. And then I don't want to print this data frame. I want to print this data frame. So essentially appending is just adding on to it. Let's see if this works. It should get the data frame should get bigger every time. Okay, so this next time it should have two rows. And I think I messed something up already actually. Oh, there it is. Look at that. Look at that. This is the new data frame. That's the new data frame. Okay, so it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And the only thing I don't like about this is the spacing. So I'm just gonna do one of them and then do one of them and do one of them sorry i'm a little ocd when it comes to that type of stuff i just like to be able to see the new run pretty easily so let's check it out so this is run number one and it's going to wait five seconds and then add it to this run number two it's going to wait five seconds and then add it to this data frame run number three and then from here, I'm going to add up all of these values. So let's let that run. Okay, it looks like it ran. Now we want to get the sum. Print um, done collecting DF data uh, volume data for bids and ask print calculating the sums. So this is the next thing we want to do. And shoot, I shouldn't have exited out of the console. I'm gonna let it run again. Okay, let that run while I try to code up the sums. So ask of all, so let's say df dot, um, what would this be? df dot sum, I believe. And then we pass in the column. What's the column name? Ask vol, uh, bid vol first. Uh, sum. of bid I feel like I already have that name some ask wall some bid wall total bid wall let's call it that equals sum df so essentially we're saying data frame and let's get the bid volume and let's add all of these together and it's called df bid vol. I think that's going to work. Total ask vol equals df dot sum ask vol print this in the last last minute this is 
total bid vol I want to make this a little shorter. Last one minute. This is bid wall. Ask wall. Total ask wall. All right, let's see if this works. So I'm going through, and at the end, after we're done with all of this, blah, 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 all this appending and whatnot, I'm going through and I'm trying to get the volume, the sum of this volume. Right, like all of that. I don't know if this is gonna work, so bear with me. Let this run. It's gonna take about a minute because it runs that many times. Looks like we're almost done here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two more times. So 10 more seconds. And then it should say done calculating volume for bids and asks. Ah, okay. So no access named bid vol. Huh. Some they bid vol, and I made bid vol, ask vol, bid vol. Huh, okay, so we got a little bug in the bug here. So I need to figure out how to how to do this. Because I do have that bid volume. <laughs> Let's try this a different way. And just to save a little bit of time, I'm going to make the sleep one second. Change back to five. Later, I hope I remember that. Let's try this a different way. Let's do a DF dot group by and then the column name, which let's double check. Bid ball. And then let's do dot sum. <clears throat> and then let's do the same thing for this one. Oops. Ask ball. And let's delete this. And let's run it back. See if this works. Okay, remember I have that one second delay now, so it's gonna be faster. Let's get it. Let's get it. Ah, okay, so it's not subscriptable. Okay, I think we're getting closer. Wait. 
what did I do? And I, that's so weird because I feel like the first way I did this was the way that worked. I just, I'm probably missing something. I'm just overlooking. So DF, oh, I just, sorry. It's early in the morning, you know? It's early in the morning. I'm tired. I'm actually not tired, but I got good sleep last night. I just need to work on my panda skills a little bit. I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a playlist of pandas because I wanna be amazing with pandas. I'm I'm okay with it and I need it because I like machine learning a lot and I wanna implement some machine learning uh, into these videos. I'm already doing it with myself, but okay. Ask ball is 2.9 million and bid ball is 702,000. Wowzers. Looks like bears are in control. And that's the data that I wanted. So let's go ahead and say if. total bid ball is bigger than ay 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 total ask ball print bulls are in control else print bears are in control okay let's let that run but I, it doesn't I didn't really do much there so I want to figure out here what should I do with this data now and how big does a spread have to be in order for me to actually like not sell my position so again the problem we ran into, not the problem, great problem to have, is that we were making our target 25%, right? And in some cases, our tar we could have made like 100%. In some cases, 25% was good. So I think what I'm gonna do is keep the target at 25%, but, if bear bulls are in control, use regular target. But that depends. It depends if I'm in a short or not. Bears are in control. So it says bears are in control. Good. Let's change this back to five seconds. And I'll just keep that data up so I can revisit it. So it means bears are in control. It means that it read this right, 29. And if bears are in control, then I wanna see the bid volume divided by the total ask volume. And then I, oops. Oops. Then I want to multiply it by a hundred to get the percentage. Mm. And this would give me, for example, it would give me sixty three divided by that, which will be like a Point two what I'm trying to figure out is like how to quantify this and like how con how big how much control are they in like is it pretty close is it way off
This isn't a percentage, I know, but. I can change it to a be a percentage if I want to. But I just don't know yet if I want to look at the percentage or the decimal. So essentially what I said here is I shouldn't call it percentage. I already have that. Um, control desk. That's a weird name for that, but whatever. Let's pass it in here. Control desk. And let's pass it in here. And now we can print this out. And I can just kind of make some assumptions based off of this. I'm going to change the sleep back to one. So this goes relatively quickly. And essentially what I'm trying to figure out here is, OK, that's great if the we see if the bears or bulls are in control, if there's more asks than bids, right? We're summing up that volume. But like what, how meaningful is that? Like, OK, bears are in control. This means it's 20% the bids are 20% the amount of so there's 20% amount of bids compared to asks right because this is 3 million 3 million and this is 637 so if I run this again that could change Point three six, so it's creeping up a little bit right so now bid volume is growing so let's run it again I just want to run it a few times because I want to get some data back so point two point three six point two like, I feel like if I was in the short position right now, I would not want to exit. Let's run it again. I'm going to do this like five times. So what I'm trying to figure out is like, what weight do I want to exit at? Like, if, if this jumps up to 0.6 and like, oh, snap. Bears are in control, but it's not much. Then I want to exit. 0.8. And like in this example, we're still going down in price. I don't want to overfit this too much though. Yeah, like again, I'm, I try to try to not be biased and try to not make decisions, but when coding, you have to make decisions. So, okay, bears are in control, but it's 0.4. So, Point four. Let's run it one more time. Uh, target's going to equal target. Uh, if ah, but it depends also if we're in a long or a short position. Okay, so. See, that's 0.74, so it's creeping up. Like, it's bears are in control, but barely. 0.74. So the book's changing now. So I'm just trying to figure out how can I adjust my target based off of this. Because now we have all the data that we need, which is awesome. 0.24. And maybe I'll make a bullish equals true and bullish equals false. Because this means they're 
pairs are in true control. 0.76. Okay, so I think the logic I'll do here is I'll look if our target is hit. Let's write this down. If target percentage hit, check book ball. And if book vol is under, so what is this? I would want to stay in all of these, 0.4, let's say under 0.4. Stay in position. So maybe sleep. Maybe we can sleep for X seconds or something. Not quite sure. But we'll get there. But need to check to see if long or short. Okay. All right, I, I think I think I got this. Um, so I need to check if it's long or short because that will determine if I should close or not. So I think I have like a function somewhere around here. P and L close, size, long, true or false. Okay, this open positions function returns to me the true or false, I think. Return open position, open position, and long. Long is true or false. Okay. So I'm going to pull in this right here. And one, or zero, one, two, three. Sorry, you can't see that. Open positions, when I call open positions, zero index will give me open positions. This will give me the bool if it's true or false. And this will give me the long or not. So let's go ahead and work with this. So first we want to see open position. bool equals open positions I'm just gonna put this open positions open positions equals open positions okay and then true false uh, open positions true false equals open positions and remember this this returns this so it'd be position one and then print f open position tf open position and then we want to see if it's long long equals open positions zero one two three and let's see this long equals Sorry, long equals long. Okay, let's put this information up here. No, I think we'll just run it and it should show it at the end. Okay, so there's gonna be about 10 seconds again. I learned my lesson yesterday and I brought some water to this session because I got very thirsty yesterday and I didn't want to have to run. 
Okay, so open positions reference before assignment. How did I? Oh, because I can't. Gosh, gosh, gosh. I'm going to call this open policy. Okay, let's run that back real quick. Let's run that back. Perfect. So open position equals false and long equals none. So if long or first, 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 if open position equals true, Sheesh, what's going on with that? Okay, so if open position equals true, true, if long equals, um, true, else, print we are in a short position if long equals true print we are in a long position okay so if open position true false equals true that means we're in a position and if long equals true, that means we're in a long position. Else, we're in a short position. So let's set this up. Else, print, we are not in position. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Let's run this back one more time. And then I want to run it one more time after that to make sure that it can tell if we're in position or not. Okay, we are not in position. That, this works perfectly. And the reason I'm putting this together is because if we're in position, um, we need to change some things to the, uh, to the, the target, right? Like we wanna figure out like, if we're in position, we'll check the target. And if the target is hit, we'll then check this. So, I'm pretty confident that our in position works pretty well. I'm going to make this smaller again because it's really big, makes it look weird. I'm going to mark it by one contract and should I go long or short? I'm going short. And the reason I'm doing this is just to test some things. Okay. Now this should run and tell us what side our position is. Okay, we're in a short position, perfect. Bears are in control, 60%. I'm gonna keep that information here because I need to work with it. So we're in a long position. If long equals true, we are in a long position, else we are in a short position. Bears are in control. All right, we know all this data. We got all this. What am I trying to do with it though, is the question. Bears are in control, bullish equals false. If target is hit, check book value, volume. If book volume is under, stay in position.
need to check to see if it's long or short, but why? So I need to check to see if it's long or short. If book volume is under 0.4, stay in position. So let's do that. Let's write that up. I'll bring this down a little bit. My handy dandy notes. I don't know about you, but when I'm coding, there's just so many thoughts going through my head that like, I have to write notes to myself. Okay, so if target is hit, check book vol volume, okay? If book volume is minus 0.4, stay in position. Or is under 0.4, stay in position. If bid, what did I call that? Total bid vol. If total bid vol is smaller than 0.4, this is, this is kind of a rule I'm putting in. So actually it's probably a pretty good parameter now that I think about it. What would I call this? Uh, I'm gonna call it volume decimal. Equals, let's start with 0.4. Okay, so volume decimal is 0.4, and I can change that later because I might, I might want to tweak it, you know? So let's just So if total bid volume is smaller than 0.4. I don't think that's right. It's this, it's control decimal. Excuse me. So if control decimal, that's right, that's right. So if control decimal is smaller than 0.4, meaning it could be 0.39, it could be 0.35, it could be 0.3, it could be 0.25, and so on and so on. Print going to sleep for a minute because it's think that would be right right I don't know if I actually want to sleep but sixty seconds and I'll just make it six seconds for now change to sixty and I just need a set of uh, something to return here if control is smaller than decimal print going to Okay, but now I need to figure out how to program this in. Vol under decimal equals true. Let's do that. And then I can return that and then bring it into some other function vol under decimal equals true and then I want to return that at the end of this this long long function return vol okay <laughs> this is doing a lot for a little no this is a lot though this is not a little this is a lot doing a lot for a lot see what's going on over here on my short position okay I'm just going to market close this. 
I made zero dollars. Just don't want it there because I don't hand trade. I don't do that. I don't hand trade. Okay, vol under. Okay, else. False. Let's do that. Okay. So I think this should work right. Like it's gonna if it volumes under dang it, I should have stayed in that position. So I could test this. Let's buy back. Where should we do? Should we short? Let's short. Just wasting money over here, but that's okay because we're learning, we're learning, we're learning, we're learning. So the volume under decimal is Okay, just giving myself some notes here. When it's running, this helps me like debug things. Okay. Let's run this, see what happens. And then how would I execute this is the question. So if the volume's under the decimal, that means it's 0.4. We are in a short position, going to sleep, because under volume. Okay, so that makes sense. So bears are in control, 0 0.23, 0 0.23. So that means they're like only about a fifth of the bid volume to the ask volume. So in my code, like if it's time to If it's time to exit because I hit my target, I actually might not exit yet. I might sleep for a little bit. And maybe when the vol is over, what is this function, or not function, uh, volume decimal. And target hit, then exit. Okay, so so it actually be this when volume equal when this equals false and target is hit, then exit. Okay, so I think I got this. Let's go ahead and let's print this out just to make sure that we have the true or false here. So at the end of this, I should see true or false. And if I have true or false, then I know I have the right, the right information. Okay, now it's gonna sleep for six seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, 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 six. True. Okay. All right, perfect. So I think I need to pull this into my into my kill switch. I'm actually gonna just sleep for I'm not gonna sleep. I'll do the sleeping in the other code. Because I need this to run again. So now I'm just going to implement this into my, I think we're almost done actually, into my kill switch. Or should it be PL close?
Yeah, I'll just do it in here. Volume under. And then just go grab this function up here. Where are you at? Damn, we did a lot today. Excuse my language. Hope that doesn't get me kicked off YouTube for saying the D word. It was OB. Um, if vol. Oh my goodness! I think this is going to be pretty easy. If vol is equals true, time uh, print volume is under the decimal threshold we set of whatever that is. Volume decimal, let's go ahead back down here. Where are we at? Okay, volume is under the decimal threshold we set of blank. So sleeping, 30 seconds. Time dot sleep, 30. So it's gonna loop through here if And then else, kill switch, right? So essentially what's gonna happen is it's gonna go through is our percentage, current percentage over the target. And our target is 25%. If it is starting the kill switch, not, not I don't want to start the kill switch. Um, I'm gonna do that and we'll put this here. Print smiles. We are in profit checking volume to see if we should start kill switch. We are in profit. Let's go ahead and take this profit. Target, no, that's not it. Whatever, I don't need that. So I'm essentially gonna say print, you know, we're in profit, checking, and hit target. Target, checking volume to see if we should start kill switch. And then it goes through here and it grabs the volume under OV, which should return true false and if volume under decimal equals true so if this equals true then we print volume is under decimal gonna sleep for 30 seconds okay perfect and then it continues on with the function and then it goes through again because we have this on loop so if volume equals true, and then it'll go through again, boom. But once this turns to false, because they just keeps looping through the code, right? Once this turns to false, then it's going to say starting the kill switch because we hit our target of that percent and already checked volume. Okay, I think this is it. Like uh, you saw the yesterday's video uh, of how to set this all up and how to code all of this out. So I don't need to go through all this code again. I'm gonna let this run now. And I'll probably just make another video tomorrow showing you the results. I'm gonna keep the same bid size. Um, 
let's see. Uh, I need to delete something up here. I'm going to keep the same uh, position size, which I think is fine. Let's run this and see what happens. Dang, this was a really good day though. I'm super excited about this because order book data is like something that I wish personally I could interpret by looking at and you kind of can for sure. You know, they call it reading the ticker or whatever, reading the tape. Ooh, look at that. We're in a 14% position winning. The we'll market closed that. And now we can start running the bot. So, you know, if you want to see all this code, of course, just watch my other videos. Um, if you want to like get a step by step, you know, nice edited videos that are short, sweet, concise to the point, exactly how to go from, from you where you are now to way further, I'll go trade in, uh, get everything I know. Of course I have a boot camp for that. Uh, step by step. I just show you everything. Cause like I said, I want to demystify this. I want to teach things I've been teaching. Uh, I love teaching and I love learning. And I love doing this with you. So I'm having a lot of fun. Let's go ahead and run it and see if we get any errors. If not, I'm just gonna let this run for the next day or two, and then I'll come back with the results. But it runs every 28 seconds. So, you know, check out check out that boot camp if you're really serious about this. And I, I know you are serious about this because I don't know how long this video is, but you're you've been with me here for a long time and I really appreciate your time today. I, I hope you've learned a lot. Um, I hope you absolutely crush it with algo trading and uh you can do it even if you're you're uh you're new to this it's it's not crazy um let's see here it looks like it's running making an opening order just made the opening order now gonna sleep for two minutes so it made those two orders as you can see here and it's just gonna play this and then essentially it's gonna check if it once it gets into an order and it hits the target it's gonna check the order book and if the order book says it's heavy on the sell side, then we're going to hold it. And if it's not heavy on the sell side, then we're going to close it. So, you know, this is the type of, type of stuff I do every single day. And I'm just, you know, putting it together so I can, I'm still going to do it every day with or without videos, but I might as well show you how I'm doing it because, you know, I'm a true believer in if I can help others do this as well, then we can all win and it's just more fun that way. So yeah, that's the video. I'm gonna put the link to the bootcamp below if you do you know, feel inclined to join that and really elevate your game. Uh, if you're not ready for the bootcamp, if you're at this point, please hit the like button. Uh, I give you everything for free here on YouTube and the like is all I ask for. Uh, and it really helps encourage me to keep making more videos and I'm gonna keep creating. I, I've got you know a few more hours here today that I'm gonna Go code some new stuff, uh, try some new things, back test some new things. If you have any questions, of course, just let me know in the comment section below and I'll answer those for you. And uh, check out the boot camp. And if you're not quite ready for the boot camp, that's totally fine as well. I'll go ahead and put another amazing video up on the screen right now. That video should be popping up on the screen. Uh, just click that if you're not going to go to the boot camp. Click this video and we'll just keep on jamming, keep learning. And uh, I believe in you. So this is really great. Just keep swimming and I'll see you in that next video that is on the screen now.